my crafty clan. Today, I want to show you how you find those keywords that sell on Etsy in a saturated market. I get asked this all the time. Firstly, people are, this. I think this is the third in my series of finding the keywords that sell, finding those banger superstar keywords for different niches, things that the customers are searching for, but the sellers haven't caught on to yet. So is there a way that we can find some keywords that sell in super saturated niches? This is where there is so many sellers that people are contacting me all the time, basically saying, Pam, but it's easy for you. What about in some of these saturated niches? So I want to show you my quick step-by-step -step how I find keywords that sell, how I find those banger keywords and how actually being in a super saturated niche is not a bad thing. It's actually easier to find these amazing Etsy keywords to make into your tags and titles and all the rest of it. It's easier than you think. It's easier in a saturated market than it is in a, in a very niche niche. Too many niches. Anyway, without further ado, let us get in to my screen. Now I'm going to be using eRank for this. Of course, I also work for eRank, but videos on this channel are my own. They don't know I'm making this. Um, this is this is just my own. I'm just showing you because I actually use eRank for all of these kind of things as well. So, 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 shall we? Shall we go into this and have a look? So I'm going to show you first of all, Ooh, wants me to refresh. Shall we refresh now? Let's do that later. Um, right, there we go. So firstly, I want to head over to my favorite, <laughs> my favorite tool just now, which is the keyword tool tool. Love this tool. Um, and it's really helpful in finding that it says it in the name keyword. So it's under tools, keyword tool. So you just want to, now I want to show you first of all how being in a niche like mine can be kind of difficult. So let's go. Needle felted. I make needle felting stuff. Let's have a look. So it's so easy for me. So here's, here's the search trends. If we take away Google, people search on Google for it a lot. It's so easy for me that the broad keyword for my niche, needle felted or needle felting is the same. I could look at this. But the whole of the summer, nobody is searching for my keyword. So I do okay on Etsy with a keyword that the, the big, the top, the head keyword for my niche. Nobody's searching for it very often. I mean, you look and you say average searches is 400, but yeah, they're, they're not all the time. Um, April in 2021 was kind of good, but yeah, it's not steady. And I don't make steady sales, if we're honest. Um, competition is low, so I've got a good chance of getting seen. But if nobody's looking, there ain't a chance of getting seen. So I will. If, if you ask nicely, I will in a future video show you how to find the keywords in the very small, the very targeted niches where you see something like this. But let's, the most, my computer's asking for things. Um, the, the thing that most people hit me with is jewelry. It is too hard to find keywords. Uh, it is too hard to find keywords for jewellery. So let's imagine we're making a ring. Uh, let's do this properly. Ring. So is it too hard to find keywords for a ring? Well, if we look straight away, initially you'd be like, okay, yeah, this is tough. There's 43, there's an average of 43, 960 people per month searching for that keyword. So that's good. However, there's over 2 million listings with the key that would show up in search for the keyword ring. So if you try, that is super saturated. It's very unlikely you're going to hit the first page on Etsy. But I've never told you to go for the keyword ring. Jewelry rings is not a niche. That's way too broad. But it is super possible 
to find the superstar keywords for something like this. So in, I hit my microphone, I apologize. In the in the niche you're in, think of that broad term like ring as a starting place. That's not your keyword, but use things like the keyword tool as a starting place to find the keywords. And how we do, well, first of all, we've looked at it and said, is there demand for selling rings on Etsy? Could I sell rings year round? And the answer is quite resoundingly yes. If we can find a way to get spotted, people are buying rings all year round. So that's good. They're also buying them from all around the world. In fact, the US is only like half. That This is very unusual, actually. Usually the US dominates, but Canada's buying rings. The UK, all around the world is buying rings. So you've got a good chance in whatever country you're in. So is the demand there? Absolutely. Now, what should we be searching for? What should we be selling? So what you want to do is scroll down to this bit, keyword ideas. This is the thing I love the most. Now you can pick between popular tags or related searches. So popular tags is out of the top 100 listings that show up in search for the word ring, what other tags do those listings have? Related searches are Buyers searching on Etsy, what other terms do they use when, you know, as well as ring? Um, and both just means it shows them both. So at the minute in time, I'm looking for ideas. So let's hit both. Um, so already, yeah, interesting. Now, what I like to do is filter this by average searches because just now it's a bit all over the place it's filtering by tag occurrence i believe so average searches if you click the little there's a fancy word for these little arrowy things but if you click here oh my computer is going so slow did you actually register that click computer hello hello yeah computer going slow today right so i clicked it once and it's gone like this let's click it again and actually wait and not just randomly keep on clicking there we go that's what i was looking for so i've filtered by average searches and we see rings and ring super super high lots of people are searching but lots of competition but already without looking far i see something interesting the third highest searched for term under the word ring is fidget ring. 22,903 average people are searching in the US for fidget ring. And when we come along to the competition, this is the number of listings just now in search for this term. 5,000. Now that's a real, that it, look, we spoke about it. The, the holy grail of keywords is to find something with four greens. I just saw something with four greens right away. Took like two clicks. And then what we want to do, remember that graph at the top? Well, if you have a paid subscription on E-Rank, you get to see all these data. If you don't have a paid subscription, the, the free subscriptions, you would have to click through each of these terms to find out the average searches and this trend graph but if you've got a paid subscription you can see all this it just makes it a bit quicker um so when i come along here the graph that we saw at the top for ring that's like a little bar chart of it here and for fidget ring we we see the same we see a little bar traff chart showing the trend over the year because sometimes you get keywords that are just a flash in the pan they're maybe just seasonal or they were just a one-off spike but fidget ring has been good for like well over a year and it's still okay it looks like there was a slight turn down from last summer but that is still a lot of people searching the blue bar shows you just this last month so that's may and that was still nearly 12,000 people a month are searching for fidget ring. So if you can make rings, can you make a fidgety one? <laughs> Let's have a look. What else when we start looking down? Now, again, here's another reasonable one. The keyword nose ring that pops out at me because it's got a lot of people searching, not, a mat, not in the millions of the competition. So that's kind of good and it sells all year round. So if you make jewellery, nose rings are popular too. 
that's definitely a potential. Now, I'm not saying, you know, if you make rings, you don't necessarily don't want to make engagement rings, but you're maybe going to have to dig down into engagement rings and see what kind of engagement rings people are looking for. Oh, crikey, here's a just up and coming keyword. I don't know what it is. I have a feeling this might be something to do with the Lord of the Rings coming up and stuff. So be careful of trademark terms. But in the past three months, this has been growing. I mean, 33,000 searches last month for Elden Ring. And there's very few of them. So if that's something you can make and you can legally, <laughs> you can legally sell it. I'm not sure if that's a trademark term. Check into it. But there we go. Uh, Moonstone ring has fairly low competition. And septum ring, so body jewellery type things, is definitely looking pretty good. If you make jewellery, can you do something like that? That's definitely a nice keyword. And here I am seeing one that immediately in my head ties in with a fidget ring, which we just saw was really good. An anxiety ring is also looking pretty good. Okay, it's dropping down, but May had 3,000 searches, so it's still a potential keyword. Not sure why it's dropping down, but it's still worth jumping on it because sometimes these, look, it's been up and down a little bit. So if you were making a fidget ring, could it also be an anxiety ring? They, in my head, sound like two things that might be a possibility that... If you're making rings anyway, might not be too expensive to have a wee trial, make a couple of rings that would fit into that. And this is all I do. Look down for the ones that stand out. You know, we don't like, good grief, Mossonite engagement ring. I assume that's some kind of stone. Someone let me know in chat what that is. But, you know, it's got 10 times the competition. It has the number of searches. It's just who competitive. No idea why that's doing so well. Um, but signet ring, is that a possibility? Carnelian ring. Now, this was a big one last year. And when we come over and look at the trends, it's dropping away. Still actually not hideous. Again, it's worth a try if you have carnelian's a stone, I think. If you have that sitting about, give it a try. Um, Lord of the Rings, do not touch. <laughs> do not touch. That is definitely going to be copyright. But hey, Snake Ring, that was doing well, has dropped off. Looks like it's maybe doing well again. Could it be an anxiety snake ring? Possibly not. But oh, here's one that could. A fidget spinner ring. <laughs> um, there's an idea. Could you do something in jade? A jade anxiety ring? So you see how you can pull these together and you can hit, potentially hit a couple of different keywords that are looking kind of good and build into a product that if you had a jade anxiety fidget ring, I don't know if this kind of thing is possible. I'm just bouncing ideas. If you had a jade anxiety fidget ring, if you made, say you made three of them and one of them you were focusing in on the keyword jade ring, but you said, you know, this jade ring can be a f an, for good for anxiety. It's a fidget type ring um, with a spinner, <laughs> structure. I don't know. I'm just bouncing ideas. Um, and then the next one could make a big deal of the fact that it's a fidget ring, but it's also it's made of jade. And the next one could make a big deal of it's a spinner ring of made of jade can be used for anxiety. Don't, by the way, with the stones, don't make any promises. Like, I don't know what the metaphysical properties of jade, jade are supposed to be, but don't make any promises, just the nature of having a fidgety ring can be good for anxiety rather than this This stone has these properties. We're not allowed to make claims like that. But there's an idea for sure. Oh, <laughs> and then in a totally different direction, an evil eye ring. Interesting. Um, fake nose ring. Eh? So we've had, didn't we have nose rings and septum rings and a fake nose ring? That looks kind of popular. People are wanting, now if they want fake nose rings, do they want other kind of fake, you know, like a fake lip ring or something? There are some ideas. Alexandrite, I assume, is another type of stone. 
And then once we start getting down further, you're starting to be unlikely to find labradorite ring there's a possibility you're un unlikely to be able to find amazing things but it can still give you some ideas um so uh fidget thumb ring i suppose you could fidget with a thumb ring i prefer to fidget with my thumb rather than the thumb ring um and if you were trying to sell engagement rings, the place to get in might be with the engagement ring box. That's a little lower competition. People are looking for that. And if they get the box from you, they might get the ring from you. Or you might get what can happen is Etsy looks at how you've done for keywords in the past. So if you were selling well for an engagement ring box, they might start looking at you for engagement ring. They might start trusting you. Um, an engagement ring box, but could also a ring bearer gift. That's something that's picking up. And bear in mind, weddings and stuff, a lot of people that had to put their weddings on hold for the past couple of years are suddenly getting married. So cool. Um, a ring box for wedding ceremony. That is a very specific keyword. Super interesting, but people are searching for it. So anyway, I could keep getting mushroom ring, mushroom fidget spinner anxiety ring made of jade. There you go. There. <laughs> no, that one looks like it's had its day. Mushrooms was super big with the whole um, cottage core thing. Cottage core is still quite big. And um, watch this space for goblin core. But it looks like mushroom rings aren't quite so much a thing anymore. Oh, dragon rings. Now we can expect them to maybe be picking up popularity with um, the new Game of Thrones House of Dragons series coming out soon. So having an idea of what's happening in the world anyway. Right. I could, you can see, I could do this forever, but that is the extent of keyword research for a super saturated niche. Put in the head, put in the, the big keyword, know what you can make, have an idea of what's going to be popular in the world. You know, I just happen to know Game of Thrones has, has that universe has a new story come, a new series coming out and Lord of the Rings has a new series coming out. So if you've got that in the back of your head, that might give you an idea of some of the kind of things that are about there. If you know something about birthstones or something, you might know what's coming up. But just look and say, what can I make? Can I make something that might fit into this potentially promising keyword? And when you scroll down to the related tags, to the suggested keywords, there really can be some interesting ones there that are at least worth trying. Don't, if you make needle felted dogs, don't immediately go off and try and make fidget rings. But if you make rings and you see a little gap in the market like that, and this, look, don't spend more than 10 minutes doing your keyword research for something like this. But if tomorrow I was wanting to get up and start making some rings, it was my it was my making day tomorrow, then I can quite simply spend 10 minutes doing what I just did. I have three or four ideas in my mind for stuff I could potentially make if that was <laughs> what I was making. Make those things, list them and see what happens. It's better than just blindly making whatever you think of and then trying to find the keyword afterwards. Find the keyword to get the inspiration to make the thing. Anyway, I hope that helps. Rings jewellery is not super saturated. It has a wealth of opportunities because a ring's not just a ring. A ring has multiple materials. It has multiple styles. It has multiple uses. You can totally find a niche for your ring. All right. Let me know in the comments below of any other type of key banger keywords <laughs> that you would like me to find for you. And don't forget to check the rest of the series on this. This is, this is being pretty fun. Okay. And I'll catch you next time.